much fun. We are finally here. These paintings are beautiful. This is so strange. Why is this caveman drawing only lines? Maybe I should talk to him. Hello, JC. Good morning. I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey, JC. What brings you here? Today I have come for a school trip with all my classmates. So, are you having a good time here? Yes, Kevin. The place is really huge and has beautiful paintings. But Kevin, why are you drawing these straight lines instead of drawing some beautiful paintings? Oh, you mean these lines? This is not a painting, JC. I was counting the number of goats I own. But how can you count using lines? JC, this is a very convenient method for counting numbers. Do you want to know more about it? Yes. Look, JC, I'm keeping a record of my belongings with the help of tally marks. Let me show you my counting, JC. Since I have only one spear for hunting, I keep a record of it by marking one straight line. Oh. I own two charcoal pieces for engraving on the walls of the cave. I keep a record of it by marking two straight lines. I own three goats. I keep a record of it by marking three straight lines. This seems so simple. Yes, JC. This is a simple way of keeping count of objects. Since I have four cows, I note down their numbers. by marking four straight lines if i had one more cow i would simply draw a straight line diagonally to cross the four lines this gives me the count of 5 oh kevin if you had six cows then how would you show it that simple jc i would simply mark one more straight line this would mean i have six cows while counting make one vertical line for each of the first four numbers the fifth number is represented by a diagonal line across the previous four this method helps in counting a large number of objects quickly these are called tally marks tally marks are a way of keeping count of the number of given objects in groups of 5 okay let me show you tally marks showing the count up till 10 Oh, this is so simple. Every time I count an object, I don't have to erase the number I had written before. Instead, I can use tally marks in which I simply have to represent each count by a straight line. Let me show you another way of representing tally marks. Hey, I like this method of writing the tally marks. I will use this whenever I want to count. Okay, JC. It's your wish. You can follow any pattern you like. Can you explain how this tally mark is written? Look, Kevin, draw a line one by one after each count till the count becomes 4. This forms a rectangle. When the count reaches 5, draw a diagonal line in the rectangle. Absolutely right, JC. Oh no. Oh. What happened, JC? Our teacher told us to meet near the bus at 1 p.m. and I'm already late. I should get going now. Thanks for teaching me this new method of counting. Bye Kevin. Bye JC. Have a great time. This is a semi-final between team A and team D. The captain of team A has won the toss and decided to bat first. Seems a wise decision by team A as the flat pitch is favorable for batting. Hey, I have an idea. Let me use tally marks to record the runs made by each player. The match has begun. Here comes the first ball. Batsman 1 has scored just one run. Here comes a bowler. Batsman 2 has scored just one run. The decision of placing a man in the slip stopped the ball from reaching the boundary. Oh, what a shot! The batsman has hit a full toss and it has gone straight to a four. It's a four for batsman one. Team D's captain has decided to change the bowler. There are some minor changes in the field. We can see one fielder is placed near the boundary to save the fours. 
Oh, but it seems like batsman one has a different strategy. It's a huge hit and the ball has reached all the way in the audience area. The first six of today's match. Batsman one seems geared up. Maybe we will see more such hits from the batsman's end. Yes. Come on team A. You guys have to win this semi-final. This time they have scored just three runs. The fielder at the boundary has done a fantastic job of stopping the ball. It's just three runs for batsman one. It's a clean bowl and batsman five is out for 15 runs. Batsman six is not out with 17 runs. The score is 103 for loss of five. Team D needs to score 104 to win the semi-finals. Wow, this first half was really interesting. Hi, JC. Hi, Dad. How was your day? My day was good. JC, what is the score so far? I heard on the radio that Team A was batting. Yes, Dad. The first half just got over. Team A scored 103 runs. That's great. Hey, what are you writing, JC? See, Dad, I recorded the runs scored by each player using tally marks. Smart way, JC. Why don't you count the tally marks to find out the runs of each batsman? Batsman one has scored five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus one. Equal to twenty six. So who scored the highest runs? Um, batsman two scored the highest runs. Cool. What are the scores of batsman one and batsman six? They are my favorite players. Batsman one scored twenty six runs and batsman six scored seventeen runs. Okay. So how much more is batsman one's score? Compared to batsman six's score, let me see. Twenty-six minus seventeen is equal to nine. The difference in their scores is nine. Absolutely right, JC. Welcome back for the second half of the match. Team D needs to score hundred and four runs to win the semi-finals. Hey, the second half is starting now. Tally marks are a way of keeping count of a number. Of given objects in groups of five, there are two ways to represent tally marks. In the first representation, while counting, draw one vertical line for each of the first four counts. The fifth count is represented by a diagonal line across the previous four lines. In the second representation, draw a line. For the first four counts to form a rectangle, the fifth count is represented by drawing a diagonal line in the rectangle.